I met Dr. Yaffe at the uh, Faisal Yaffe at uh, several conferences. Prosthetic urology is a really small world, you know. If you attend uh, that kind of conference regularly, you will see the same faces, many same faces, you know, uh, all the time. So I was uh, able to see him in person, but uh, the real chance that I get to know him more closely is that uh, when we were doing the research together, uh, named uh, the surgical, new surgical technique named uh, Mini Jupet. He was uh, one of the leading uh, investigators of this surgery. It was a multi-institutional uh, uh, study to investigate the uh, surgical technique. Uh, it is for a, a condition named the climacteria, uh, which has been explained by Dr. Yafi. And um, throughout the you know, uh, research and investigation, I was uh, deeply touched by his enthusiasm toward the research. Like he said, medical research, you know, is not a money-making or a fame, you know, following uh, business. But uh, he is doing that to make this prosthetic urology field better by doing so to serve, to help the other prosthetic urologists and he himself to serve our patients better. And that will make the world a better place. So, Dr. Yafi believes in that. Uh, I believe uh, he believes in karma as well. So uh, we have to do. After all, you know, we physicians should do better to serve our. You know, we have to serve our patients better so that we can make a world better place. So his enthusiasm and eagerness for the uh, research is that what I will do, what I admire so most. And uh, I bet that he is. Uh, treating his patients with that enthusiasm as well. I do hope that I could visit his practice and learn more from him. At the same time, invite him to my own practice in Seoul so that I can learn more from him. So I can't wait to see him in my practice and I can't wait to go and visit his practice to see how he takes care of his patient to learn more from him. That's a very good question and really um, there's a lot of people who treat cancer and you know you cure someone's cancer and then they live longer but there are a lot of complications afterwards and their quality of life is terrible. They can't have sex, they're leaking urine and they're miserable. They live longer you know but they're not happy and people are living longer now regardless the population is aging and as people get older you need to be able to afford them a better quality of life so I found through sexual dysfunction especially erectile dysfunction that this was a means to help people to live a better life um, and you put smiles on people's faces on the couples on the wives you know on the partners and that, that's really the reason I went into it and penile prosthetics although it is complicated surgery it is really the uh, sometimes the last and final option for these patients and it works very well with very very good satisfaction rates so I am about halfway across the country I am in uh, I am in California so I had to take two flights to get here but this um, this meeting is very important this is the the most important meeting in North America for sexual medicine one of the most important meetings in the world and I think it's very important for us to come and discuss our research uh, but also learn from others and see what's new so we can offer the best options for our patients. I think that's very important. I think the day you stop trying to learn and stop trying to improve yourself is the day you die. As, as, as doctors and as surgeons, we have to continue improving. There are always new technology. Nothing we do is perfect. So whenever we improve, we improve the quality of life for our patients. We decrease the outcome, decrease the complications and it can improve outcomes. So it's always very important for us to continue being hungry, not only to learn, but to improve ourselves and to teach others how to do things better. So. Definitely, I think when, when you teach others, you also teach yourself. But when you teach others, you force upon yourself to adhere to certain standards and you can't teach others if you don't keep on improving. So I think that forces you as well to get better, but it also allows you to teach others who will also perpetuate what you're doing and allow this, you, this learning to improve the quality of lives of other patients that you can't reach. So there's, there are a lot of reasons. I think that, that the onset of Viagra helped people become a little bit more comfortable discussing ED, but it's still a topic that remains in the bedroom for a lot of people and there are a lot of cultural reasons, uh, particularly in certain cultures where this is not a topic they like to discuss or are comfortable discussing. It's important that we, as sexual medicine prosthetic specialists, that we 
teach the audience, teach the, the, the community that there are options and we can discuss these options with them and that these options work. And I think when patients find out, like with Viagra in the, in the 90s, that these options are available and that they work, they will become more comfortable coming and, and discussing these things and seeking treatment. Uh, but it is upon us um, to, um, to just go out there and let the patients know what is available. And it's the same thing as um, breast cancer. Uh, women only learn that they needed, you know, to get treatment and get, sorry, get screened for breast cancer once they found out that there were treatments and once all the marketing came out about. And that's the same thing when it comes to sexual dysfunction and prosthetics. There are many rewards. Uh, one of the rewards is I train residents and fellows. So when I see my residents coming out of training and learning how to do things, that, that's very rewarding. Another reward is seeing the smile on patients' faces and their partners. Uh, it's incredibly rewarding when you get a partner come and hug you because they have not had sex in five, six years and you know, six weeks after you operate on them they're able to have sex. So that, that's always incredibly rewarding and it's incredibly rewarding when you do research or when your work is acknowledged at a conference like the Sexual Medicine Society of North America meeting. It lets you know that what you're doing and what you're teaching others is, is going a long way and it shows that you know, you've, all the hard work you've put in has is, is, uh, is come to fruition. So I, I had a pastor, uh, a, a pastor uh, who, uh, him and his wife uh, had a very great, very good relationship. They're very religious. Um, he had had a prostatectomy, I think, about 14 or 16 years ago, and he was not able to have intercourse as of about one or two years after surgery. Completely not responsive to pills, to injections, uh, to vacuum erection device, and they accepted the fact that this was something that was not in their life anymore. Um, they, they found me through a seminar that I was giving about, uh, about sexual dysfunction and came and talked to me. We did a penile ultrasound. We assessed that he had significant venous leakage, uh, discussed with him that his best option would be a penile implant. Um, they, uh, they are the happiest couple I've seen. They were very happy before because they had God, but now they're even happier. Uh, and and they're, very, they're very grateful. So it, it makes you happy to see that you can improve people's lives. And they're not a younger couple. But again, this goes back to your question about uh, the stigmatization about, of, sexual, uh, of sexuality. There is no age cutoff, is what I tell my patients. They were you know, in their late 70s, but they were still interested in sex, and now they're happier. <laughs> so the mini jupet is a uh, is a new technique that the goal of it is to control patients who have very minimal leakage or that have leakage when they're having intercourse. So basically urine leaks when they're having intercourse, which is a very underdiagnosed problem but a very important problem that is often often neglected after prostate surgery. So what happens is these patients are trying to have intercourse, but they leak urine and it becomes very embarrassing for them. Their partners don't want to have sex because they obviously don't want the urine coming all over them. And we have many different options that have been offered, but none of them really work very well, for, especially for the leakage uh, with, with intercourse. So what we're doing is at the time that we're putting a penile implant, we're putting a little piece of graft uh, that is working as a technique where it presses on the urethra and doesn't allow the urine to leak out during intercourse. I have the pleasure to work with uh, leaders from all across the world, uh, from Europe, uh, from Korea with uh, Dr. Park, <laughs> and, and, and from the United States such as Dr. Wilson, and so far we have some really, really good and exciting outcomes and we're very excited to present here today at this, uh, this meeting. So the, what I joke around with my residents who are considering their practices afterwards, I tell them when you do research, you lose money. When, <laughs> when, you, when you operate and see patients, you make money. But at the end of the day, uh, life obviously is not all about money. And when you, do, when you do your research and prosthetics, you're advancing your field uh, and you're able to teach others and to teach yourself and to, and, and to give better outcomes to your patients. I have a passion for research. Um, and I don't think I will ever stop doing research and trying to, to, to better our field. And like anything else, there's a lot of room for, for improvement. So there are a, a few prosthetic surgeons across, across the world that are, that are really w renowned and very respected and that are pioneers in what we do. And Dr. Park is certainly one of those, those few. Um, Dr. Park has is, is revolutionized the way we do prosthetic surgery and the fact that he is the uh, the, the uh, forerunner uh, and the pioneer in terms of doing prosthetic surgery as an outpatient, 
with minimal anesthesia and allowing patients to go home the same day. Um, his, his data and his knowledge is par with the greatest implanters that, that are available. And I have an it's my honor that I am currently doing uh, research with him on our mini Jupet study for climacteria. But again, Dr. Dr. Park is one of the one of the pioneers of prosthetic surgery in the world right now.